For task 1D, you're going to get this handout. And we're going to practice looking at the conjunctions that can also be prepositions. So let's write those at the top of your paper right now. Those are after, before, as, since, and until. And so we have to be especially careful with those. I call those tricksters because they um, can be used in two different ways. So we're going to go through this process systematically to figure out the type of sentence. And we can't figure out the type of the sentence until we go through these processes. So we're going to start by identifying phrases, then looking for conjunctions. If it's a coordinating conjunction, we circle it and we label it CC. If it's a subordinating, we box it, and then we use it to underline a dependent clause. All right. After we ate, we went to the movies. So after is one of those words that we have to pay special attention to. We have to decide, is it followed by just a noun, or is there a subject and a verb following it? So when I look at it, let's say that I thought that after we, weak is a noun or a pronoun, and I thought that was the prepositional phrase. What I would be left with is, eight, we went to the movies. And that doesn't make sense. I'm breaking that grouping of words apart from how they're supposed to be. So I can tell that after is not being used as a preposition here. It must be being used as a subordinating conjunction. After what? After we ate. We've got a subject and then the action Eight. So that's a dependent clause. Now I do see another phrase in there, two. Two is one I have to watch because two could be an infinitive or a preposition. So to the, the isn't a verb, so I know that this has to be a prepositional phrase. So I'm left with we went, a subject and a verb that expresses a complete thought, so that's an independent clause. When I find a dependent clause with an independent clause, then I know that the sentence is complex. Number two, after the lecture, we went to the movies. Now this sentence sounds a lot like this one. I already know that to the movies is a prepositional phrase. I see after again. So I'm going to look, is it followed by a noun? Or is there a subject and a verb? Well, if I keep going here, lecture's a noun, and I've got a modifier. After the lecture is a prepositional phrase. There's no verb in there. So now I'm left with just the grouping of words. We went, a subject and a verb for an independent clause. So I have an independent clause with two prepositional phrases. That is a simple sentence. I've been living in Denver since last summer. I see the preposition in, so I'm going to highlight it, in what? In Denver. I see since, I have to decide, is since being used as a preposition? Is there just a noun after it? Or is there a subject and a verb? Since what? Since last summer. Last describes which summer, and summer is a noun, and I don't see a verb after it, so this must be a prepositional phrase. So I'm left with the grouping of words, I've been living. The subject is I, what am I doing? I've been living. This whole thing acts like the verb. And that is an independent clause. So I have an independent clause with two prepositional phrases. So this is simple. I've been living in Denver since my father died. Very, very close in meaning. We can see that the very beginning of the sentence is exactly the same. I'm doing this on purpose. So you can see how one little word or two little words can totally change the structure of the sentence. So I know that in Denver is a prepositional phrase. Now I have to decide, is since my father died a prepositional phrase or is it a dependent clause? So let's say I see since. And I think, I said, well, I see a noun since my father. So if I were to cover that grouping of words up, 
since my father I'd be left with, I've been, I've been living in Denver, died. Well, I broke it again, the meaning of that phrasing apart. It doesn't work. I can't just have died by itself there. It's attached to this idea. So in this case, since must be a, depend, a subordinating conjunction, introducing a clause. Since what? Since my father died. Father's the subject, and what did he do? Died. That's a dependent clause. Now I'm left with I've been living, and just like in the sentence above, it's an independent clause. When I have an independent clause with a dependent clause, then that must be complex. Now I'm going to do the next couple with you, but I'm not going to do all of the work for you. I want to make sure that you're listening to the screencast and following along. So I'm going to do parts of it, but you're responsible for doing the rest, and then um, I'll let you do the last few on your own to show me your understanding. Okay? The plane had to land in Stuttgart because of the bad weather. So I see some prepositional phrases in there. In is a preposition in Stuttgart. I see to. To land can be a preposition. In this case, though, I think it's talking about the action of doing it. So to land in this case is an infinitive, to plus a verb, to do what? To land. And then I see of, of the bad weather, but I noticed that it has because in front of it, and I remembered that when because of is together, then that's a prepositional phrase. So I'm going to highlight that. Now I'm left with the grouping of words the plane had. Plane is the subject. Had is the verb. That leaves me with an independent clause. So this must be a simple sentence. Number six, because the weather was bad, the plane had to land in Stuttgart. Again, this sentence means exactly the same thing. Exactly the same. There's just a difference of order and a little bit of wording. Because the weather was bad, the plane had to land in Stuttgart. So again, I've got the same infinitive, to land. It's talking about it as an action. And I've got the prepositional phrase, in Stuttgart. And I'm left with, because the weather was bad, the plane had. I don't see of in front of the weather. So because, in this case, must be being used as a subordinating conjunction. So I'm going to put a box around it and figure out what dependent clause to under, underline. Because weather's the subject, was is the verb, so the dependent clause is because the weather was bad. That's a dependent clause. Same independent clause over here, the plane had is the verb, so I've got a dependent clause plus an independent clause. This one is complex. Right, I'm going to do two more with you, and I'm not going to do any labeling. You're going to do the labeling as I talk you through it. And then you're going to do the last ones on yourself, on your own. He stood before the judge and declared his innocence. Oh, actually, I'm going to do this one with you. This is a tricky one. Um, looking for prepositions, I see the word before. So I have to think of is before a preposition. Before the judge, is that a prepositional phrase? So if I got that out of there, he stood and declared his innocence. That sounds like it would make sense. So, before the judge can be taken out, that's a prepositional phrase. There's no verb in there. It's just a preposition with a noun. So I'm left with, he stood and declared his innocence. Now, I do see a conjunction in here, so I'm going to circle it and label it CC, but I don't see a comma with it. So I know that this is not going to be a compound sentence. There's no comma. So I know at this point that it's simple because I've already figured out that this is a prepositional phrase. He is my subject. What did he do? He stood and declared. So this is a simple sentence. It's only got one 
independent clause. My independent clause just happens to have two different verbs in it, but it's still one idea. Before he declared his innocence, he looked at the judge for a long time. All right, I see that before again. So let's say that I think that it's before he is a preposition. I'm left with declared his innocence. He looked at the judge for a long time. That does not work. So I don't think that before is a preposition. I do see at, at the judge, that's a prepositional phrase, and for, for a long time. So since before is not a preposition, it must be a subordinating conjunction. Before what? Before he declared his innocence. I've got a subject, he, and what did he do? He declared. That's a dependent clause. And then I've got an independent clause, he looked. Notice how short these independent clauses are once we get rid of all that extra stuff. So since I have an independent clause with a dependent clause, then this one must be a complex sentence. All right, I think I'm going to do 9 and 10 with you too. You're very lucky today. Give yourself plenty of time for the work is quite demanding. When well, I see of, I know right away that of is a preposition, of time. And I see for, for the work, let's say I think that's a prepositional phrase, then I'm left with give yourself plenty is quite demanding. Well, that doesn't quite work. Now I know that for is not a subordinating conjunction. I see it with a comma. It can be a coordinating conjunction, though. So I think this is compound. Now I see the verb over here, give. I don't see a subject, but I know it's a command. It's talking to you. We have that understood you here. You are the subject. You do what? You give. That's an independent clause. Work is, is my other independent clause. So this sentence is compound. This is the first sentence I've seen that uses for as a coordinating conjunction in our examples. All right, number 10, give yourself plenty of time for work. Now I see of time again. So that's a prepositional phrase. This time I see for, I don't see it with a comma, so I know it's not compound. Let's see, for work. There's no verb after it, so this must be a prepositional phrase, for work. And then I've got the same idea here. I've got the understood you as my subject and give as my verb. So this is an independent clause with two prepositional phrases. This must be simple. All right, now for real, you're going to do 11 through 17 on your own, labeling just like we did here. And then you're going to go back to the mastery grid and complete the exit ticket for your grade. If you have any questions, you can let me know and I will come help you.